Heidi Fang for MMA Fight Corner with future Hall of Famer Forrest Griffin. Forrest, it's been a long road for you with the UFC, and now you have this opportunity to be inducted in the Hall of Fame coming up July 5th and 6th at the Fan Expo. What was the ultimate decision for you to retire? Uh, I was actually already banged up uh, dealing with some shoulder injuries before I got hurt for the last fight, and then you know, since 2009, I've uh, pulled out of half the fights I've agreed to. You know, so if you can't, uh, if you can't keep your word to somebody and say, "Yeah, I'm going to show up and fight that date," if, if it, you know, you see you're having problems making it, you know, you can't really do it. If you hadn't had all these injuries and you were healthy enough to fight, like Phil Davis at UFC 155, do you think that maybe even after that fight, you still would have made the decision to retire? No, not if I had a shoulder or a knee. I would definitely still. I mean, my my chin's getting a little softer too, but I could have, you know, been using that footwork stuff, trying to use that. But no, definitely not. I've heard that, like, for Robert Drysdale, for instance, he's one of your coaches with jiu-jitsu, and he had said that basically he sees you as one of those guys that doesn't have that will that, I guess, the doesn't know how to quit, that you went basically into the gym after your surgeries and – went in and started working out. Do you feel like well, Yeah, I mean, but but you know, to say I'm I'm unusual for that. That's most professional athletes have that, you know. Most guys are like, "Okay, when do I when can I start training again?" You know, when do you you know, I got into this because I really liked fighting. I like training. It's fun, you know. Is there anything that would ever pull you out that would make you come out of retirement? Any fight, anything that's left on the wish list that you didn't get to do? Well, I mean, I'll start training again probably September, August, maybe. And if I'm just magically healed and, like, everything works great, then I'll try it again. But, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not healthy now, so. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your whole career here that you've had with the UFC. Obviously, it started with the Ultimate Fighter 1. You and Stefan Bonner forever tied together throughout, I guess, Destiny's course. Uh, the two of you will be inducted together in the Hall of Fame. Uh did you speak with Stefan about that, and have you guys have been able to talk about how you're intertwined forever? Well, yeah, we were actually hanging out this weekend, and we did talk about it. It was mostly like Stefan was like, hey, you're in the loop these days. Let me know where I'm supposed to be and when, what I'm supposed to wear, and if I have to talk. I was like, okay, I'll let you know those things. <laughs> was he surprised to hear about the induction? Because to my knowledge, he wasn't really, I guess, informed until it was announced. Uh, neither of us were. I think I found out about it on Twitter. Oh, really? And like enough people said it, I was like, this doesn't sound like a hoax. I might have already left when that was said. Wow. Like immediately after the press conference, I I, uh, I left. So Didn't know. Dana gave you no inkling whatsoever. Well, yeah, he had like given me, but it, nothing was ever finalized, you know. And then I actually left right after that. So the guys that had actually fought that night could, you know, talk. So I felt like I was uh, a fifth wheel there. Mm -hmm. Hey, I didn't fight tonight, guys, but let me... Let me take some time out of your press conference. You guys don't have anywhere to go tonight. Yeah. That fight, it's always shown before every UFC, the uh, Bob O'Reilly, it's become infamous. Um, did you know at that time that it would escalate to what it is and basically bring the UFC to what it is today? I did. I did. I had was like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to intentionally gas myself. <laughs> so I fight horrible the second round and just get beat up, and then uh, I'll try to make a push the third round. Yeah, that's exactly how I planned it. And then I was even like, hey, you know what? I got a great song for you. No, I wish so. So whoever did that, smart guy. <laughs> uh, with The Ultimate Fighter, I had heard that you weren't actually going to do it. That at first uh, you I were going was. to. Yeah, no, that's true. I was actually a last-minute replacement. Really? Yeah, some poor guy who I won't name actually uh, failed his uh, drug test for weed. Oh. And so I got his spot. I only had 17 days' notice. Uh, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't leave the, I had just become a cop, you know, and I had, a, I'd quit my job being a cop in 2002 to become a professional cage fighter. And, uh, after years of being broke, broken and a, a low level bouncer, I decided to finish college and go back to, uh, law enforcement. And I just started, got a good job. Things are looking up. Uh, I was maybe going to take some grad school classes or something. Probably not, but the idea was there. I had the application anyway. I wasn't going to do it, but, um, <laughs> And then, you know, it's like, man, you know, it's that uh, that evil mistress. She's come back. She broke my heart once, but she wants me back, she says, you know. So I was like, oh, I'll give it another shot. Wow. And I did. 
Do you think that you ever would have stuck with just being law enforcement, or do you think that somehow you eventually would have found MMA? I mean, I'm I'm glad I'm glad I didn't. I mean, I would have a lot of regret, you know, be like, man, I could have been a big superstar like that Stefan Bonner if I'd only done that show. <laughs> if they'd give me more than 17 days' notice. You had multiple fights in the UFC with Tito Ortiz, uh, Shogun Hua, Stefan Bonner. Which of those was your favorite? Uh, probably the first Stefan fight, for sure, yeah. And which would you say was your toughest that you ever had in the UFC? Tough to say. I've had a lot of tough fights. You know, a lot of bad performances. That's, uh, you know, I think... Uh, if people liked me, it's because I was very real. <laughs> you know, I, I, I never looked superhuman. I looked, uh, you know, less than human sometimes. But, uh, yeah. So they were all tough. I don't I don't have a good answer. We also have, like, you're now an author. You have several books. Um, when the Ish Goes Down, just because, you know, we might have some peachy uh, viewers here. So uh, will you continue with that as you head into uh, retirement maybe i don't know i uh, i had written some good chunks of a third book and then i, I had a temper tantrum and broke my phone so mm -hmm. they were lost so i did at least break my phone i mean i can't throw a punch anymore with a you know decent punch but i can at least slam my phone on the ground so i got that going for me and uh, is there anything particular that maybe that you'd really want to do like that you haven't been able to do since you've been training and everything and just anything on your wish list, a quick future destination or plans? Uh, well, I'm glad you ask. The uh, biggest thing on my wish list is going to the Fan Expo. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this July 5th and 6th at the Mandalay Bay Event Center. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. No, I actually am. It's going to be fun. You're going to be doing autograph signings and I things am, of that nature? I am. I am. I might have some beer sodas nice. earlier in the day if that's if that's allowed. I don't know. So, to date with the UFC and your entire MMA career, uh, what for you was, I guess, your defining moment? Would you say it would be the Bonner fight? Yeah, probably. I mean, you said it, so it's got to be true. <laughs> and is there anything at all that you could foresee that would a fight or anybody that would ever drag you out of retirement? Uh, I mean, if we're at the movies and some guy pours a drink on my wife, it's going down. Well, everybody, that's Forrest Griffin. He will be available at the UFC Fan Expo July 5th and 6th at the Mandalay Bay Arena Convention Center. <laughs> so you can see him there and also his Hall of Fame induction.